Welcome to Local Living Tri-City, your go-to podcast for exploring the vibrant communities of Temecula, Murrieta, and Menifee. Join me, Liz Jones, as we dive into real estate insights and local business stories, bringing you closer to the heart of our Tri-City area. Let's get started with today's episode. Hey everyone, welcome back to Local Living, your guide to all things real estate in Southern California. I'm your host, Liz Jones, and today we're diving into something a lot of you have been asking about, first-time homebuyer tips. When buying your first home, it can be both exciting and overwhelming, but the right preparation can make it go smooth. So let's break down the timeline, the expectations, and what you can do to make this process easier. Timeline to start prepping. Well, ideally about 12 to 18 months before you're ready to buy. The earlier you start, the smoother things will be down the road. Cleaning up your credit. If you're thinking about buying a home, cleaning up your credit should be at the top of your list. Check your credit report for errors, pay down high interest debts, and avoid opening any new lines of credit. Aim for a score of 680, but ideally higher if you get better rates. It may be worth time and money to reach into a credit repair resource, and if you don't have one, you can reach out to me, I can help. Start saving. You'll need a down payment, so closing costs and other expenses. Conventional loans, typically you need between 5 and 20% of the down payment, but FHA loans are 3.5%. And don't forget, you need an earnest deposit of 1% to 3% of your purchase price. That's refundable under certain conditions. This deposit is not necessary until you have an agreed-upon contract, and within three days of that escrow, you'll be asked to move those funds to your escrow account. So let's start on our search. It doesn't hurt to start casually looking for homes early on. This will help you get a sense of the market and what's available in your price range. It will be important to understand what your must-haves in the process. The three-bedroom, the big garage, the backyard. Finding those perfect home, the perfect home is really hard and you have to get focused on your must-haves and then it will become much easier. Where do you want to live? Is it rural? Is it a city? How much time are you willing to put into the commute to go to work? How important are the schools, the size of the home, whether it has an HOA or it doesn't? If you feel about, how do you feel about single home versus town home? And how does this fit with your budget and your lifestyle? Homes have a lot of weekly maintenance. Are you prepared to spend time in the yard cleaning the pool and everything every single weekend? These deal, details are important before you begin your search. Then we've got to look for a lender and some loan products. You'll need to get connected about three to six months before you're ready to buy. And there are a variety of loan products and finding the right one is will save you money in the long run. There's a conventional loan. These often require a high credit score and a large down payment, somewhere between uh, five and 20%. For those people that have great credit, this can save on mortgage insurance each month and will essentially lower your payments. There's FHA loans, and a great option for a first-time home buyer with lower credit scores and less money saved for a down payment. Typically, it's 3.5% down payment on these loans, and you won't need to have super high credit. But there will be a minimum requirement of a credit score of about 580 to 620. Your lenders will look at your monthly household income, your debt, your credit cards, your loans, and any outstanding balances to plan what your budget would be and your family needs. There's a VA loan and USDA loan. If you're a veteran or buying in a rural area, you might have to qualify for a loan with no down payment at all. These are awesome loans made available to special circumstances. The USDA loan applies when you are in a rural area like Kawanga or Paris or Wildemar. Um, they are designed to help new buyers with purchases with little or no money down. They take a few more weeks to process and they have sufficient income but not sufficient down payment. Our veterans or active duty take full advantages of VA loans. Although it's not the VA that issues the loan itself, instead, it does provide a partial guarantee to our private lenders, such as banks and mortgage companies, that offer those VA loans. This guarantee means that if a borrower defaults on their loan, the VA will reimburse that lender for a portion of the loan balance, typically 25%. Because of that VA backing, the lenders are available, are able to offer these loans to veterans, service members, eligible surviving spouses with little or no money down. This is a significant benefit, especially for first-time home buyers. It's crucially important to have the right lender in place. No two are created equal. 
often your agent, your experienced agent, will have a collection of favorite lender partners. And they become our favorite when they deliver results to our clients over and over again. It takes dedication, great investigation skills, and knowing their lending products with extraordinary customer service. If you need some recommendations, who to call first, please reach out to me for details. A great lender will walk you through the options and get you pre-approved, which is the key to putting in any offer. So now you have to look for an agent. So let's talk about finding the right real estate agent. Your agent is going to be your guide, your fiduciary through this process. So it's important to find someone who understands the needs and your best interests and they have it at heart. They should be experienced, know the area, and be readily available. Your best agents are responsive and get what you are looking for quickly. They have had enough experience to know what kind of buyer you are and understand realistic expectations for your family and your budget and are able to articulate this to you in a professional manner. They are your advisor. They have an obligation to protect your assets and share all the aspects of buying with your next house, even if that means it will cost them their commission. What to look for in this agent? Well, look for someone who is familiar with the area, has experience working with first-time buyers, and communicates well. You'll want an agent who's proactive, not someone you're constantly having to chase down for updates. When to move on? Well, if this agent is not responsive and doesn't understand what you're looking for or just doesn't get it, don't be afraid to move on. Buying a home is a huge deal, and you deserve to have someone who's in your corner. There's negotiation and list price expectations that we need to talk about. First, first-time home buyers wonder how much they can negotiate off the list price. While it varies based on the market in general, you might get between 1% and 5% off the list price in a balanced market. However, competitive here in Southern California, you might have to offer full price or even above asking to secure a home. Often we meet with buyers who identify a home they like at a certain price. Even before they have seen the house, they're wondering if they can offer less. This is the wrong way to approach buying in a house. You should be looking at homes that fit your budget. If you can only buy a $600,000 house, let's not be looking at $650,000 homes and hoping they will take less. Agents meet with sellers to determine the sale price based on market conditions and other sold homes. It's not typical that a home seller will want to discount $20,000 and pay your agent commissions. It's just not realistic. Now, that's not to say it never happens. Some homes that are sitting from the market for quite a long time, you can negotiate deeply. They may even be insulted, though, when you offer something, shutting the door on any further negotiations and you'll own on that home. A good agent has a feel for the right price and how to purchase it. They are communicating constantly with the other agent, the listing agent, and they are finding out what is a reasonable offer and what the seller is looking for. And these need to be taken into consideration. Your agent is working for you and would be wise to take their advice. What's acceptable? Negotiating for repairs or closing costs is common, but expecting a huge discount that may not always be realistic, especially in the seller's market where inventory is limited. The escrow timeline and its contingencies. Once your offer is accepted, you enter into escrow. Typically, that lasts around 30 days. During this escrow, there are several contingencies in place to protect you and the seller. Let's talk about the inspection contingency. This allows you to negotiate for repairs or even cancel the deal if the home has serious issues. Make sure you attend the inspection, ask questions, and don't be afraid to negotiate if something major comes up. In California, there are several safeguards for your deposit. We often will factor in 10 to 17 days to inspect the home. During that time, you can cancel the contract, receive back all your earnest money, and with little or no hassle. This period of time is designed for you to investigate the home and any potential concerns. If some are found, we often can ask the sellers to fix the problems or credit us for future repairs. They are under no obligation to do so, however. It will be important for them if they want to keep the deal together. So we negotiate to help pay your future repairs. In our financing contingency, this is in place to ensure that your loan gets approved. If something goes wrong and you're financing, you can typically back out without losing your earnest deposit. During this time, the lender may ask you for several supporting documents, tax returns, bank statements, copies of loans, income statements, etc. It is typical to go through a round of last-minute documents that pertain to your job and your income. Who pays for what? Okay, so you're wondering who's responsible for certain costs. 
Well, typically the buyers will cover costs like the home inspection and the appraisal, maybe an upgraded home warranty, impounded taxes, loan fees, title and escrow on your side. Well, sellers often will pay for the termite inspections, the home warranties, the title and escrow fees for their side, natural hazard, HOA transfer fees, and any repairs that are in negotiation. What happens if things aren't perfect in the house? If the inspection uncovers issues, you have a few options. You can negotiate with the seller to make the repairs, ask for credit at closing, or walk away from the issues significant enough that they can't be resolved. This is where having a skilled agent really comes in handy. Finally, there's move-in expectations and concerns. After you have moved in, there still might be a few concerns. Issues can come up that weren't obvious during our inspections. So it's a good idea to set aside a small emergency fund for repairs and unexpected cost. Often many clients will use their home warranty to fix those surprises. The way it works is that uh, there is an annual coverage. Each item that you have chosen to insure, roof, plumbing, water heater, dishwasher, etc., will be a separate service charge, normally $75. That's $75 for each type of repair. So take note, if you have more than one thing to fix, you'll pay a second and third fee. When moving in, sometimes this is immediate following closing, but at times there may be a seller who requests to stay in that house for a few days while they secure their next property. Typically this is one to three days. Also, you'll want to do a final walkthrough before closing, making sure the home is in the best con condition agreed upon. This is your opportunity to call attention to anything that wasn't exposed while the furniture was in place, and if the repairs were promised and done. It's a great time to check on those things. When touring homes, pay attention to details like the roof, the windows, the plumbing, and as these can lead to really big expenses down the line if being replaced. In closing, buying your first home can be overwhelming, but with the right preparation and support, it doesn't have to be. If you have any questions about the home buying process or you're ready to take the next step, feel free to reach out. I'm here to help guide you through every step of the way. Thanks for tuning in to Local Living. I will catch you on the next episode. And remember, finding the right home is a journey worth taking. Until the next time. Thank you for listening to Local Living Tri-City. Stay tuned for more insights and stories from Temecula, Murrieta, Menifee, and surrounding areas. Be sure to subscribe, leave a review, and share this episode with a friend that is passionate about the Tri-City area as you are. Goodbye for now, and we'll see you next episode.